JC News, St. John Church News. Here's your anchor, Sandra Dorsey. Good morning. Welcome to today's edition of SJC News. We are expecting greater here at St. John, and a key element in that is ensuring that you are informed, connected, and spreading the word. Happy birthday to those born in the month of March. May the year ahead be full of bountiful blessings. Happy anniversary to those who said I do in March. May your love grow deeper, your trust become stronger, and your togetherness everlasting. Springtime is here, St. John. Let's refresh with a spiritual spring clean. The Southwest Georgia Annual Conference is this week. Let's pray for our pastor, Reverend Dr. Washington, as he reports our yearly meeting and for his safe return to us for another year. That concludes today's edition of SJC News. Be informed, stay connected, and spread the word. Now here's Donya Albright. Greetings, St. John family, and welcome to today's virtual worship experience. Please be reminded that members of the finance team will be here today from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. to receive your tithes and offerings. You may also take advantage of use of our cash app. Please be reminded that God loves a cheerful giver. And now let us be blessed with a word from our pastor, Reverend Washington. Good morning. This is a day the Lord has made and I am rejoicing and I'm glad to be present in worshiping God with you. Let me thank you for joining us this wonderful morning. I'm Richard Allen Washington and it is a pleasure to welcome you to the virtual worship experience and word of the St. John Church here in Columbus, Georgia. We are grateful that you are worshiping with us. St. John family, thank you so much for joining us this time, this week and this space. Truly, we're blessed to have you here. I'm thankful that each one of you has chosen to make this your virtual home. And I encourage you to share this with your loved ones. If it blesses you, help it bless someone else. Don't forget to do me a favor. Make sure you push the subscribe button so that you can catch our Bible study when they come on, our worship experiences on special days, and sometimes we have special nuggets from pastor and others that we wanna share and seed into your life. It's the third month of the year, and we are continuing in a powerful series, strengthening our faith in times of uncertainty. Let's pray and hear what God has to say on this, the Lord's day. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Use me to bring glory and light and strength to the people who look and who listen. In this broadcast, we do pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the wonderful Savior and brother we know. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's go to work, shall we? The same piece of scripture we've been in for the last few weeks. Exodus chapter 32 verses one through six. That's Exodus chapter 32, verse one through six. I do believe this will be our last Sunday with this particular scripture. And certainly we will close the series down prayerfully on this. Remember, we are trying to what? In the third month of the year, we are strengthening our faith in times of uncertainty. Let's see what Exodus chapter 32, verses one through six can lead us in. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together with Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what happened to him. We don't know what's become of him. And Aaron said to them, take off the rings of gold, which are in the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off their rings of gold, which were in their ears, and bought them to Aaron. And Aaron received their gold at their hand and fashioned it, shaping it into a graving tool and molded it 
into a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made the proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be the feast of the Lord. And they rose early in the morning and offered burnt offerings and brought praise offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose to play. Amen. Beloved, remember the subject, strengthening our faith in times of uncertainty. Beloved, we have been together for about three weeks talking about the necessity of strengthening our faith in times of uncertainty. Right now, in every area of life that you and I are privileged to live, we aren't always sure about what's around the corner. And if we tell the truth, we're not sure what's about to happen in the next moment. We need faith. We need love and we need courage to give us victory. I believe the word of God has a story that powerfully impacts how we strengthen our faith. God has centered us in the 32nd chapter of Exodus. The story unfolds, as you and I know, we've been together for a few weeks, so I don't have to do a lot of dressing this context for you. You know, the children of God, the Israelites, were on a journey. And let me pause and remind you as we come to a close in this particular series that the book of Exodus is about God instructing and guiding the children of God, the anointed children of God, on how to come out of some of the most dangerous, get this, disrespectful and dysfunctional behaviors that humanity has ever seen. I don't know about you, but if there's anything that's disrespectful to God, it is that we stay in behavior dysfunctional that does not bring glory to him and does not strengthen us where we're weak. God has made us to have an abundant life and to be examples for persons who don't know God so that they might come and want to know how God is doing what God is doing in our life. And so this, the 32nd chapter, is how God is utilizing and blessing us in this series. The book of Exodus is about God leading us out of some things. And in month number three, there may be one or two of you that join me in desiring family to come out of some old habit, to come out of some dysfunctional ways and to change the trajectory of where we want to go. It's month number three. And if you are like me, there's some aspects of your life where you are still not satisfied with the direction that you're headed. I've come to announce to you on this, the final Sunday of this series, that God wants you to strengthen your faith in the times of uncertainty so you can move forward. And the book of Exodus is going to get us there. The children of God, the Israelites, the chosen people of God are stuck in some unfortunate circumstance. The word reveals that Moses had gone to talk with God. You know the story that Moses and God were away learning. Moses is learning how to build a tabernacle so that God might dwell with them. You remember God is very pleased with the development and according to the scripture, the growth that the children of Israel has had in their journey. Let me pause and say once again, I said it last week and I want to share another hermeneutical kickstand here with you. Whenever God is pleased with us and the growth and the development that we are spiritually having, whenever the spiritual maturity that happens on the inside is taking place and it pleases God, God is going to look to progress toward you. Remember, God wants us to be one. And when God wants us to be one, beloved, it's important you know that God will work to come to you. That's a word for some of us, that God is willing to come to us if we're willing to come to God. And that's what God was doing here with the children of Israel. He was coming close to them. He was telling their spiritual leader ways that they can connect richer and better through a tabernacle. But the wisdom of God is before God can sit with them in presence. He gives them somewhat of an example or opportunity to show how mature they are. Do you realize that right now what you're going through, God is actually giving you the space and the opportunity to show that you're mature enough spiritually, emotionally to handle the next step. Some of us are stuck 
we believe. Because we think God is not hearing us. I've come to tell you this morning that you are where you are. I am where I am because God is wanting us to reveal our spiritual maturation and maturity. Can you handle the nose of life and still celebrate and know that God is a good God? Can you sit in the corner of disappointment and disrespect? Can you be still and know that God is still blessing? that nothing has changed about your identity with God and that God still has a what? Promised future greater than what you're looking at now. God's testing us, beloved. God is checking to see if we are spiritually mature enough to handle where we are so that God might, watch this, dwell with us and push us forward. I am so excited, I'm so excited. Thank you, God, for willingly giving us this opportunity. So we know that the children of Israel need to strengthen their faith. We know that instead of strengthening their faith, they started to do some things that was destroying their faith. We know that they wanted to return to some old ways. When things didn't happen the way they wanted them to, the desire of the children of Israel was to return to old habits and old ways and old lifestyles. And God did not need them to return. That's our mistake sometimes. You know the history of that. Rather than do something different, we would want to return. And God has not called us to return to old ways of 2022. God has called us to remember how good God has been bringing us through 2022. Beloved, we know that. We also know last week that they, instead of strengthening their faith, they rejected the ways that God was attempting to strengthen them. They rejected God because they wanted to replace God. My brothers and sisters, look at them. They want to replace God and say to Aaron, the spiritual mature person supposedly in that position, make us new gods. They wanted to replace the God with some form of a comfortable, convenient God. Rather than reconnect with God, they would rather replace God. And I don't know about you, but in some ways, when we are stuck and dealing with uncertainty and the lives that we're living, we would rather replace what God is doing than reconnect with God. Sometimes you need to reconnect with God right where you are. You don't need another location. You don't need another job. You don't need another person to be in relationship with. You don't need another church. You don't need a new pastor. What you need is to reconnect with the place that God has been feeding you, delivering you, guiding you, and providing the wisdom and the favor you need, reconnect with that God rather than try to replace. You don't know how we have often sold ourselves short because we are trying to replace what God is really working through in our life. Reconnect, that was last week. So what's left? I'm finished with the sermon. What's left? What left? What is left? What can the children of Israel share with us about strengthening our faith? Remember, you don't strengthen your faith by returning. You strengthen your faith by remembering. You don't strengthen your faith by replacing. You strengthen your faith by reconnecting. And remember, lastly, beloved, the children of Israel show us today that there's one more thing that doesn't strengthen our faith that we are used to. So in, order for this, in order for you to get this, you really have to understand the real problem here. The real challenge that the children of Israel are dealing with is one that we deal with. Is, as a matter of fact, I want to have Bible study right here real quick. Realistically, the children of Israel are actually doing the original sin. They have committed the original sin. Have you? Have you committed the original sin? What's the original sin? You know, Adam and Eve did the same thing that the children of Israel are doing in this very moment while Moses has slipped away. Look, look, in the Garden of Eden, God appears to be not around and a serpent shows up and tries to persuade those in the garden, Adam and Eve, to do something in the absence of God. Preach, Pastor, right here. You and I, fall victim to the same thing. It's the same thing. You know, I want to share this with you. 
Humanity does not change. Human behavior has been the same since the biblical narrative and even before that has been written. Whenever God appears silent and absent, humanity in its uncertainty does some of the same thing that they're doing in this text. Adam and Eve, what did they do? What Adam and Eve did, God appears to be gone. There appears to be no word, voice of God. And Adam and Eve make a decision to do something they shouldn't. They resist the will of God. They resist God's plan and go about replacing and returning and resisting as opposed to growing faith. Who, preach pastor, I want you to know that the children of Israel continued the same thing that Adam and Eve did. In the absence of God and the servant of God, they decide to make them a God. Who? The serpent shows up. And in this text, the children of Israel say to, to Aaron, make us gods that we might worship them. Here's, here's the problem. They resist the will of God. What's the will? The will is that even when God is not answering, not responding, not doing anything but sitting in silence, the, the desire of God is that we rest in his promise and we remember and we reconnect in the relationship. They do not. They resist that. When we are in uncertain moments, we resist God's desire through his will to stay with God. We do everything the children of Israel, replace him and return. But hear me, God has sent me on a mission to remind us as a community of faith, when God is not responding to us, when God is not answering us, when we are failing to hear what we want to hear and receive what we feel we deserve, let us not return, let us not replace, and let us not resist, but let us recognize, preach pastor, you got to recognize God in unusual and unseen ways. Faith is the substance of what we have not seen, but we hope for. They did not stand on his word. They didn't stand in the promise. They didn't even stand on the past trust in God. I, rem I recall in a few more years, this is the trajectory of speaking. Adam and Eve messed up. The children of Israel mess up with it. And guess what? In the future, David will mess up. In Psalm 13, verses 5, 6, and 7, David says, how long am I going to have to deal with this? David also suffered the, in uncertain moments, not knowing how God would respond. And beloved, we cannot in times of uncertainty resist what God is up to in our life. I call it the will. It's really resisting how God is moving in your life. I don't follow God just because God does everything I want God to do. That would be a genie. I would be manipulating God. God would cease to be God. I follow God not because he does everything I ask and need according to my riches and my desire, but I follow God because I can trust God's character. The children of Israel should have trusted the character of God in this situation. And I don't know about you, but I can trust God's character. I can look back on the DNA of God and know that when I needed God, God has been present. Know that when I didn't have anyone to turn to, God has been able to stand boldly and secure my tenses and watch me live when others thought I would die. Do I have any witnesses in here who have known that the moments in your life when you should have been dead, but God made sure that death and the wages of sin behave, preach pastor. God kept you traveling when you were sleeping at the wheel and he guided you safely from one place to another. God kept you when you were in a sexual indiscretion and you were not protected and you were doing things that you should not have done, but the Lord made a way for you somehow. You should have been fired. 
You should have never had the job. You should have been released and you should have been in jail, but the Lord's character kept you. Is there anybody that will preach with me and testify that in your past, you could recognize now God is a keeper and because God's a keeper, you can trust him. That's all the children of Israel had to do. They resisted how God was working when they should have recognized God. I don't know about you, but our faith is strengthened, beloved, when we recognize God and not resist. Oh, how did they resist? Make us gods to stand between what God is trying to do in you and do in me is resisting. When God is determined to bless you through your pain, but you are determined to resist the pain so you can sit on the sideline in comfort, you are resisting God's work. There are churches who need to hear this, this isn't just individual, but there are faith groups, denominations, when God is trying to bless a denomination through its pain and its embarrassment. But rather than face that truth, you would try to avoid it and kick the can down the road a little bit further. Oh, my brother, oh, my sister, you're missing that God is going to bless you through your pain, through your embarrassment, through your acknowledgement. God, there is. On the other side of the pain and the suffering, there is a blessing. There is a breakthrough. There are congregations that need not run when ugliness shows up, when unfaithfulness shows up, when mistakes show up. Don't run from your church. God's going to bless you through all of the struggle and the strain. Don't resist. You need to recognize. My brothers and sisters, I'm done. My soul happened now. I ain't preached like this in a long time. Feels good when I reflect on it, when I remember and not return, when I decide to reconnect with God in the right way instead of replacing what God's doing in my life, when I'm not resisting, but I recognize God at work, Beloved, I can stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I know when I'm in darkness that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Am I talking to anybody in here? Let me see if I can shut it down. Let me see if there's a way that we can get out of here and have a good day. Let me see. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the face of God shine all over you. I remember this is how I'll shut it down. You know, whenever there's an accident and the traffic is slowed to a standstill and the accident is ahead of you in the traffic and you are in a standstill, it is always interesting to me how people who sit and wait for God have a tendency to, to look for God to come and to look for help to come, but they don't recognize it until they hear the siren. You're going to miss your shout. God in your life may send the siren like the siren of an ambulance to let people know I'm on the way. Don't miss it. You got to look and recognize the sirens that God's turning up in your life. There to let you know I'm almost there. I'm on my way. I am headed in your direction. I'm looking now to see who can recognize that God has sent the siren. The word says sound the alarm. God has sounded the alarm in your life. Trouble has shown up. The siren is sound. Sickness has shown up. Can I just be honest? Disappointment and rejection have all shown up in your life. But God sent a siren letting you know I have not forgotten you. Letting you know that I am with you even if you don't see me. I'll be honest. When I haven't seen God, God's carrying me the most. I don't see him, but I can show sure feel him. And you got to recognize that every time God is working on your behalf, 
It might not feel like it, but you can recognize God in some way. That's all. I'm going to shut it down. Listen, I, want, I wanted to go get it, but I'm going to wait. I'm wanting you to recognize God in your dilemmas right now. Don't resist God and what God's doing. Recognize God. Listen, I hope this series has been a blessing to your soul. You do not strengthen your faith in times of uncertainty by returning to your old life. You strengthen your faith in times of uncertainty by not returning, but family, by remembering. We strengthen our faith in times of uncertainty. Guess what? Not replacing what God is working on in our life, but we strengthen it by reconnecting with God. Don't leave. Reconnect. Get stronger connected. And family, we don't strengthen our faith in times of uncertainty by resisting what God is working through with us. We don't, we don't strengthen our faith saying, oh, I'm not doing it. I'm out. We don't, we don't strengthen our faith by resisting God's work. We strengthen our faith, family, by recognizing it is God at work. Listen, have a good week. May the Lord bless you real good. And thank you so kindly for tuning in this week. God loves you. I love you. And let me say this in conclusion. It's been a great conference year for us here at this wonderful place called St. John. I'm thankful to you for tuning in to us for this Southwest Georgia Annual Conference. Listen, God has been good. I pray I get to see you next week as your pastor. We leave it in the hands of God. It's gonna be awesome. And I'm prayerful that I'll tune in next week and God has a word for us. Be encouraged, take care.